SoFi's stock has had a ton of momentum recently, rising nearly 25% this month on increased trading volume. SoFi will also be releasing earnings next month showing everything from their new user growth to the effect their new SoFi Stadium is having. But this one new update in SoFi's recent legal troubles could spell disaster for the stock. In a worst case scenario, it could even cost them their ability to acquire a national bank charter, costing them billions in value. So in this video, I'm going to walk through what the new SoFi lawsuit actually is how likely it is that it will cost SoFi their bank charter, and talk about what that could mean for the company and their stock price. So hit the like button if you want, and let's start by talking about SoFi's recent legal troubles. So SoFi has had their fair share of lawsuits in the past, dating back to their original CEO, Mike Cagney. Cagney was one of the four original co-founders of the company, but he resigned amid a lawsuit by a former employee. That employee claimed he had witnessed several instances of harassment at the company, and that leadership tried to bury those claims. Once Cagney was out, this led to SoFi hiring their current CEO, Anthony Noto, in 2017. Noto was an experienced leader, having worked as the chief operating officer of Twitter, a managing director at Goldman Sachs, and as the CFO of the NFL. But even under Noto, SoFi still has had to deal with lawsuits. In May 2020, before the company went public, SoFi was hit by a lawsuit accusing it of denying loans to immigrants in the United States. This lawsuit has now carried on for well over a year now, with a judge as recently as August 2021 one, refusing to dismiss the civil rights class action against SoFi. If SoFi loses the class action or is forced to settle, it could potentially cost the company tens of millions of dollars in damages. But the case will likely carry on for several years and shouldn't impact the stock too much in the short term. In fact, Damage to the company's reputation may be a bigger factor than the monetary damages if this case drags on long enough. But even that lawsuit pales in comparison to the potential impact of a new lawsuit levied against the company in September 2021 by a director of Golden Pacific Bank Corp, Rick Fowler. If you're someone who follows SoFi closely, you may have heard that bank's name before. Golden Pacific is a small regional California bank that SoFi reached an agreement to acquire back in March 2021 with the idea that buying an existing bank could speed up SoFi's application to become a national bank. And as one of the founders of Golden Pacific, a director of the bank, and a member of their board of directors, Rick Fowler and his lawsuit could potentially disrupt SoFi's acquisition of Golden Pacific. This, in turn, could hugely delay SoFi's timeline for obtaining a bank charter. Fowler's lawsuit is about how SoFi's acquisition of Golden Pacific was approved from the regional bank side. He alleges that he was opposed to the acquisition from the start. But in order to get the merger approved, the bank illegally converted preferred shares into voting shares, allowing them to push the $22.3 million deal through despite his objections. He is now challenging the entire acquisition by SoFi, saying that the deal should not go through. And if a judge approves his injunction, the merger deal could get delayed or at worst completely halted while the case is heard. So to understand why this is a big deal for SoFi and to try to quantify how big the effect could be, we first need to talk about why having a bank charter even matters for SoFi. SoFi already offers the equivalent to many banking services to their users. You can store and move cash around with SoFi money, invest in stocks with SoFi Invest, or borrow loans, SoFi's original bread and butter. But there are many things you can't do as a fintech unless you are a nationally registered bank. You don't have access to low-cost FDIC-insured deposits, you don't get to operate across state lines with simplified regulations, and there are certain services that you are not allowed to offer to consumers at all. Now, up until now, many fintechs have gotten around this by partnering with existing banks. Robinhood does this with their cash management account, and even Apple did something similar when they launched their Apple credit card in partnership with Goldman Sachs. Partnering with an existing bank makes it easy to get going quickly on offering financial services, but it really limits your autonomy and increases the cost of everything that you do. This can be super clearly seen in this chart that SoFi released showing the theoretical impact of a bank charter on the business, and you can see that it is substantial. For example, looking at SoFi's Galileo Technology Platform, a company SoFi acquired in 2020 for what was then 10% of the value of the entire company. Right now, Galileo offers digital financial services like payments APIs and virtual credit cards, but because they're not a bank, they have to partner with a traditional bank to do so, similar to what Apple is doing with their credit card. But if SoFi were a bank, 
they could sponsor Galileo themselves, allowing them to move more quickly and save any fees that they would need to split with their sponsor bank. And SoFi does currently have conditional approval for a bank charter from one organization, the OCC, that's the Office of the Comptroller of Currency, but they still need approval from both the FDIC and the Federal Reserve to actually become a national bank. Once that happens, it would affect every single part of SoFi's ecosystem of products, lowering costs dramatically, speeding up development of new products, and lending a ton of credibility to SoFi's brand, something I talked about extensively in my last video on SoFi. And when you operate at the scale of a company like this, the value that that brings quickly rises into the hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars. But how does all that lost value fall onto SoFi's acquisition of a tiny little bank in California? Why does Golden Pacific matter to SoFi becoming their own bank? Can't they just wait for their existing application to clear? After all, they have conditional approval. Well, SoFi and their CEO, Anthony Noto, are smart, and they aren't going to leave something as important as becoming a national bank up to chance. Back when SoFi first applied to become a national bank, they submitted what's known as a de novo application meaning they want to become an entirely new bank that has never existed before. If we pull up a list of all the applications for new bank charters since 2020, we can see SoFi is on the list, and we can see that they submitted that application in August 2020. And just a few months after that, in October 2020, they had conditional approval from the OCC to become a bank. But the process for creating a new bank from scratch is a long one, and SoFi has been waiting for well over a year now. And this isn't just SoFi getting stonewalled. In fact, we can see on this list several banks that have been waiting much longer than SoFi. Agility Bank, for example, near the bottom, has been waiting since March 2020. And in the top section of this table, we can see lots of other banks that applied between March 2020 and August 2020 who don't even have conditional approval yet. In fact, if we look at this chart from 2018, the number of de novo bank charters being submitted has dropped to almost zero in recent years, a phenomenon some have attributed to the FDIC's broken deposit insurance process that just takes forever to complete. Now, the FDIC has stated that they want to fix it, but we're still not seeing a ton of new applications, nothing like what we used to see. So SoFi could sit around and wait for the application to process, but it could potentially take a very long time. So they decided to pursue another avenue of getting a bank charter in parallel. Instead of only pursuing a de novo application, they could also pursue a change of control application, where you essentially transfer a bank charter from one institution to another. How do you do this? Well, you buy an existing bank which is exactly what SoFi agreed to do in March 2021 with Golden Pacific. And that approval process is way faster than making a new bank charter from scratch. So this acquisition would essentially accelerate SoFi's ability to become a national bank. At the time of the acquisition back in March of 2021, SoFi estimated the acquisition would complete before the end of 2021. And up until now, there's been no reason to question that. Of course, now that whole plan has been thrown into jeopardy by the fact that the Golden Pacific merger could be blocked by this lawsuit from the founder. But how likely is that to happen? Well, to understand that, we need to look a little below the surface of this lawsuit and why it was even filed. So Fowler's fundamental issue is he believes some of the stockholders in Golden Pacific voted even though they shouldn't have been able to. Basically, people with non-voting shares or preferred shares were turned into voting shares illegally. This matters because it would swing the vote from 58% in favor of the acquisition to only 43% in favor and the vote would have failed. The CEO of Golden Pacific predictably completely denies this, saying the Federal Reserve had signed off on the conversion of preferred shares to voting shares, and that saying this conversion was illegal is completely irresponsible of Fowler. So is there any basis for this lawsuit? And why is Fowler so adamant about suing? Well, in April, after the bank had agreed to the acquisition, Fowler wanted out, and he wanted the bank to purchase his remaining shares. A few weeks later, he received a letter stating that the fair market value of the common shares was $1.65 each. Fowler says that they should be valued at no less than $3.19 per share. 
And since he owned 1.28 million shares, the difference in value there is equal to $1.97 million, money that he thinks he is owed. Of course, SoFi is offering $2.55 per share in the acquisition, meaning that Golden Pacific basically told Fowler, sure, we'll buy back your shares now, but we'll pay you even less than SoFi will when the merger completes. You can see why Fowler might be mad about this. So Fowler wasn't happy about the merger in the first place, but he is also doubly mad that he isn't getting the money he asked for. The difference between his $3.19 valuation per share and SoFi's $2.55 per share is around $820,000. So I see three possibilities here. Possibility one, a judge dismisses the case and it goes away with SoFi no worse for the wear. This is obviously the ideal situation, but it's entirely up to the judge and chances are Fowler would try again in some way. Possibility two, Fowler pushes this case just long enough and loud enough to get a settlement out of SoFi, probably for around the $1 million he is looking for just to make him go away. This might be worth it for SoFi and Golden Pacific, considering how much value they leave on the table every day they delay obtaining a bank charter. In this case, this basically becomes a non-story and the acquisition goes through without a hitch. Considering Fowler has sued the bank before trying to get money out of them, this, in my opinion, is the most likely possibility. Or there's also possibility three, that Fowler actually follows through on his threat and a judge agrees to pause the acquisition long enough to settle the case. In that situation, it almost doesn't matter who wins the case, as if they delay the merger long enough, the merger eventually becomes pointless. After all, the whole point in buying a bank is it's supposed to be faster than completing the de novo bank charter application. Any delay could render that speed boost completely useless. So unfortunately, there's not too much we can do in the short term to react to this information. In the worst case, this lawsuit could indefinitely delay SoFi acquiring Golden Pacific, and in turn delay SoFi becoming a national bank. In the best case, this lawsuit could just be dismissed as frivolous and SoFi could complete the merger and change control bank charter application could be submitted before the end of the year. My plan is to treat this event as if it's not going to affect the bank charter timeline. But remember that even if it does, it will not block SoFi from attaining a bank charter. It will only delay the process. Considering how quickly SoFi managed to get preliminary approval from the OCC to become a bank, it's possible that their luck will hold, and the FDIC will also be quicker than usual even without the merger taking place. But let me know what you think of this lawsuit and how you think it might turn out. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.